So this is our onboard provision refrigeration system. So right now the temperatures are out of range. And this is another refrigeration system which is our heating, ventilation, and air condition system. Right now the system is not also cooling our accommodation well. Hello guys, so right now we have a trouble on our refrigeration system as well on our air condition system and they are both not in range and we need to find out what is the main reason why both of them at the same time is not in range. So come and join me in this new learning. Before we proceed to the analyzation of the condition of our refrigeration systems, let me give you a familiarization on our onboard provision ref. We have two compressors in this provision system, but only one can be run. The other one will be the standby compressor. We have safety system for the high pressure, low pressure, and oil pressure of the compressor. The setting for the high pressure cutout is around 18.5 bar and for the suction pressure is around 2 bar. So we do the changeover of the compressor every end of the month. So to do the changeover, we just need to switch off the running compressor and then we can open this service valve and all the refrigerant from the condenser side will transfer to the other compressor while it is running and we have also a water cooled condenser and we have this inlet and outlet water cooling system going through our condenser so the flow of refrigerant is from the compressor it will go to the condenser and then it will pass on to this pipe and it will go all the way to the filter dryer. So this is our filter dryer. And from filter dryer, it will be distributed all the way to the individual solenoid valve. Solenoid valve for the vegetable room, meat room, and fish room. And then after each valve, it will pass through each individual thermostatic expansion valve. And then it will go to each individual rooms. This is our meat room. This is how big is our meat room. So right now, there is a slight build up of ice on the evaporator side. And this is our fish room. This is the way how it looks like inside and there is also a slight build up of ice into our evaporator side. And then this is our vegetable room. And this is how big our vegetable room. So we will try to defrost the ice buildup on each rooms for the meat and fish room. And for the vegetable room, we do not have a defrost system onto that side. And from individual rooms, the pipings will meet into this single pipe and it will go all the way to the 
accumulator. And then it will go to the compressor. And so this is the closed loop system of our provision refrigeration system. On the other hand, this is our air conditioning system. And this is servicing 7 decks into our accommodation. Onboard air conditioning system is using R417A refrigerant. And we have a semi-hermetic compressor into the system. So the refrigerant flows from the compressor all the way to this water-cooled condenser. Just like our provision refrigeration system, this air conditioning system also uses water-cooled condenser. So we have this low temperature fresh water that is circulating onto the system from the inlet of our condenser and then it will go to the outlet and then it will recirculate it back to each coolers from the engine room. Then the refrigerant will flow from the condenser all the way to this pipe and then it will pass on one of the service valve which we use for the isolation of the condenser or when we are doing pump down. After that, it will pass on this filter dryer and then it will pass on this pipe all the way to one of the magnetic valve and then it will go on to the evaporator side so this is our thermal expansion valve from the evaporator so the air handling unit has one fan motor so this fan motor will suck in the cold temperature coming from the evaporator and then it will be distributed to each and every deck on our accommodation. So we also have the return line which is this dock. This is coming from different decks and it is sucking the return air all the way to our evaporator side this is to recirculate the temperature or the air coming from each cabins all the way to our evaporator section so right now we're having around 32 degrees celsius return air and this is the temperature coming from our accommodation and the system can only generate around 24 degrees Celsius of cold air going into our accommodation. In case the vessel is in the cold areas, then we have this natural vent and this will suck the cold air from the outside and it will be going through our evaporator and this is the one that we will feed in into our system all the way to the accommodation. Speaking of cold areas, if by any chance it is really low temperature on outside, then we have this heating system which uses steam. Going back to the refrigerant flow, then from the evaporator, it will go to this collecting tank. And then it will go all the way to the suction side of the compressor and then the cycle will continue by itself. So the current pressures into our system is a little bit higher on its normal working pressure. And I believe this is the main reason why we don't have enough cooling onto our air condition unit. So why we're having high pressure into the system? So the main reason is because of our seawater temperature. So how does the seawater temperature affects our air conditioning system on board? This is the main reason why we have out-of-range temperatures into our provision refrigeration and with our air conditioning unit. And that is because both are using water-cooled condenser and this condenser are dependent on the cooling system of our LT and to our seawater temperature. 
On the next video, I am going to show you the end-to-end -end circulation system of this cooling system. And I am going to show you on how are we gonna fix this kind of situation. So this is your Lakey Jake and see you on the next vlog.